So uh, just high level, just so everybody kind of gets situated. I mean, again, like Decodable in a nutshell is really, uh, you know, our goal is to make stream processing sort of accessible to mere mortals, um, you know, versus like the PhD crowd. And so in a lot of cases, we're really optimizing for ease of use. So you will see no infrastructure uh, to deploy, you will see no configuration other than as it relates to the data infrastructure you're going to connect to, um, the pipelines that you're going to build, which are primarily expressed through through SQL inside of Decodable. Um, Decodable is a cloud service, so you know we don't have like node counts and like all these other kinds of things. Um, and the use cases that, and we can sort of talk more about this tend to be a couple. One is helping people build event-driven architectures. So think services, talking to other services via things like Kafka, um, you know, over topics uh, for, you know, inter-service messaging and those kinds of things and, and sort of everything that goes along with it. Um, streaming ETL is sort of like a bread and butter use case for us. So I have multiple Kafka topic or Pulsar, or Red Panda, like whatever your sort of weapon of choice is. We're agnostic as to the messaging, the messaging infrastructure. We're not a replacement for, you know, Kafka or Pulsar or anything like that. We can sort of get into where we sort of fit into the stack. Um, but really, if you have, you know, a pair of, you know, messaging topics or queues, and you really just need to like transform one kind of data into a different kind of data for a downstream use case or one of your consumers or something like that. That's, that is again, like I said, bread and butter for us. And that typically also kind of bleeds into what I would think of as like real-time data integration, where you have uh, all the operational systems inside of, you know, the business that are spitting out like things like clickstream or inventory events or IOT events, whatever, whatever makes sense. And you have on the other side, um, all the data infrastructure, both real time infrastructure and at rest infrastructure. So everything from S3 based, you know, data lakes, things like Presto or AWS Athena, um, uh, Snowflake, Postgres, like operational systems like Postgres, Mongo, uh, Redis, uh, Cassandra, so on and so forth. So it can really be kind of any pair of systems. Um, and we sort of pride ourselves on not having um, any, you know, vendor proprietary sort of uh, data formats or anything like that. So we work very well with the open source ecosystem. We're based on a lot of open source infrastructure under the hood. Um, again, we can talk about this. So basically inside of Decodable, when you log in, you get an account, account is within a cloud region and you can actually have multiple accounts that sort of do, uh, do different things um, that are resonant inside of different cloud regions. And so the data that we're processing is within one of those cloud regions. Now that said, it's really common to be able to like move data between cloud regions. So you can have multiple accounts that sort of act as uh, a distributed data plane that you can sort of pump data between um, via, again, things like Kafka topics or Kinesis topics so on and so forth. And so inside of Decodable, we tried to slim down the number of concepts you need to learn about. So everything is really a pipeline, a stream or a connector or a connection, sorry. And we support a, you know, a bunch of different kinds of connections. Today, we're mostly focused on messaging systems. So you'll see a lot of things like Kafka, and uh, you'll see more kinds of systems coming in the future. Um, Kafka, Red Panda, those kinds of things are supported today. Um, and so these uh, connections really are you know, foremost, you know, the, the detailed information uh, about you know, uh, the, the various connector specific properties that are required to connect there. So like mostly we're gonna try and, you know, simplify these things by, you know, guiding people through, um, you know, the different ways you can uh, configure, in this case, a Kafka connection. So if you're connecting to something like here, you can see we're using MSK inside of AWS with, uh, with SASL, uh, SSL authentication. Um, every connection has a schema associated with it. And we do uh, use the stock 
SQL standard data types with some extensions here and there. So you can see this usage metrics field actually is a nested row uh, with one field called num tasks in it. Um, and then of course, you know, this sort of like high level overview shows you like, this is uh, a connect, you know, it's connected to Kafka and it is um, outbound sending data to one stream and I'll show you streams in a second. Um, and you get some high level overview uh, of the metric. So this is a very, very low volume connection, but you can at least see that like, you know, there's, you know, 16 bytes per second and, you know, there's less than one record per second. Um, the total number of records, you know, that are, that are uh, moving through the system since the last time we activated it. So our connections are either running or not running. Um, and in fact, if you watch closely, you can see these numbers tick about every five or 10 seconds. I forget exactly what the interval is. Um, but you sort of get the idea that, you know, uh, there, there are different kinds of connections. Here's an S3 connection, um, sort of receiving data from a stream. So this is a sync connection. Um, and you can see, you know, a bunch of S3 specific properties. And in this case, you know, we're writing data as Parquet files in uh, US West 2. Um, you can see, this is actually some of our internal stuff. So uh, you can see what we're doing here. Uh, we're using IAM role uh, based uh, authentication. And you can see things like how we lay out that data on disk. And this is in fact, so that we can query it with Athena um, or which is Presto or Trino under the hood. Um, and again, you can see, you know, has its own schema. Uh, again, like, you know, some high level performance information, mostly to tell you whether or not this connection is working and, and pumping data to when and where it should. Um, but we can, of course, look at the streams that are connected and the stream is for all intent and purpose is basically you can think of this as like a, a topic in the messaging system. These are our internal streams that allow us to connect connections to pipelines and then pipelines to connections on the other side. So we use streams in between there. Um, and this allows you to build multiple pipelines off the same stream or have multiple connections reading from or writing to the same stream. So you can do kind of fan in and fan out architectures. You can string pipelines together. So a pipeline that writes to a stream that feeds another pipeline and so on and so forth or multiple pipelines. So this is really like once you're inside of uh, inside of decodable. And we do this for all the reasons that you would expect. This allows us to absorb back pressure and deal with, you know, pipeline restarts without losing data and have durable, you know, uh, storage, you know, so that you can reprocess and rewind on, on streams and all these other kinds of things. That said, again, we only do this to make decodable work. Uh, most of our customers already have things like Kafka, you know, uh, Red Panda, Pulsar, Kinesis, those kinds of things deployed in their infrastructure. And so that's why we say we're not like necessarily a replacement for those systems. We don't provide sort of like actual Kafka API access to, to these kinds of things. So we don't replace the brokers, but we do allow you to connect to pre-existing brokers uh, and broker infrastructure. Um, and then, of course, pipelines, which is kind of the, the again, like the, the main sort of central thing that stitches together, you know, all of these uh, different pipelines. And so pipelines for us are very, very simple, even though they do uh, all the heavy lifting. So basically, a pipeline is really a versioned uh, SQL statement. And we support all of the sort of SQL that you would expect. Um, we really want to make this as intuitive as possible. So most of the pipelines, or in fact, all the pipelines that you'll see inside of Decodable follow this insert into my output stream, select whatever from my input streams. Um, and we choose that syntax. Um, there are other systems that use slightly different syntax because this seems to be the most natural to people who are not streaming experts, quite frankly. Excuse me, so people can think about it in terms of how they would think about working with a Snowflake or a BigQuery or a Postgres. 
um, and, uh, and for the most part sort of things work. This is a really simple pipeline. Uh, you can see it's basically taking a bunch of different fields and, uh, and normalizing them to a specific format. This is like your typical stream process or a typical streaming ETL style use case where you're basically just fixing you know, the schema, the data types, the semantics to sort of match what a specific consumer looks like. Um, and so in this case, we're doing things like turning something into a timestamp and, you know, getting the precision right, um, handling null values, uh, renaming um, certain fields. And in this case, even just providing some constant values for cell ID and metric name, because we know that there's only sort of one kind of data that sort of comes. Again, this is mostly just making things compatible for, uh, for what you would see downstream. Um, and, you know, one of the big things, of course, is like, okay, so I'm building my SQL. Does this SQL work? Am I getting what I expected? And so here we offer, uh, this is not a replacement for like real-time analytics systems and things like that, but this is really just a preview function to show you a sample of what that data looks like um, to make sure it matches what you expect. Um, and it's actually latching onto the real incoming stream taking a sample of that data and pumping it back to the browser so that you get a sense of what that actually looks like. And so here you can go, okay, like my, my data looks right. Um, we sort of show it to you in this JSON format, even though it could be in protobuf or Avro or, you know, JSON doesn't, doesn't matter, but this is purely for display purposes. Um, and so once this looks right, you can actually activate your pipeline. This one's already running. Um, but you can see that, you know, you have the ability to stop and start pipelines. And uh, again, just like the connectors, or the, sorry, the connections, all pipelines have metrics around them. And uh, the, the primary difference is that you have input and output metrics um, versus just input or output, depending on sort of the, the, whether it's a source connection or sync connection. And so, you know, you can see things like records per second and bytes per second. And again, this is mostly just to try and help you figure out like, is my data flowing? Is it getting to where it should be? Um, kind of gives you some idea of, of what this what this winds up looking like. Um, so, uh, I mean, you know, for, for, for all intent and purpose, that's, that's sort of decodable in a nutshell. Um, really about those event-driven, you know, helping sort of application developers, data engineers to build those event-driven pipelines or event-driven microservices. And um, the streaming ETL use cases, we can do all the stuff that you would expect in SQL, uh, including like the real-time aggregations, windowed aggregations, um, all of these other kinds of things. 